A few months ago, I gave you guys a very detailed set of steps to do a resting state analysis in AFNI. Now, since that time, all that information has become completely obsolete and all of my efforts were basically wasted because now there's a new nifty tool called 3DT Project, which will do all that stuff except much faster and with less chance of you messing stuff up, which is always good. So <laughs> this is the way I would do it now. It's it's all done through ubersubject.py or through afniproc.py. Uh, really, you know, ubersubject.py will call upon afniproc.py, so they'll do the same thing. But this is now the, the new default in AFNI. They think it's the best way to do resting state analysis. I'm not going to disagree with them and like I said, it's just a lot quicker, and this is very, very useful, especially when you have very large data sets. So this is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to open up Uber Subject PY and see how this creates the commands that we're going to use to do this new resting state analysis. So subject ID, I'm going to call this test. Uh, group ID, resting test, that doesn't really matter. Just to keep it happy, and for analysis initialization, I'm going to select rest and then apply. Okay, so it's gonna, I think it changes one of the processing blocks, I'm not entirely sure. But just make sure you do that. Select your anatomical, select your epi like you usually would, and also don't select any stimulus timing files because we don't actually have a model. This is a model free analysis. Uh, I hope I used that right. In any case, we're not using any timing files to try to uh, create some model of what the activity should look like. Okay, uh, first TR to remove, change that if you need to. I, I don't think I need to in this case, but just check to make sure it's okay for you. And the rest of these defaults are usually just fine. So go ahead, initialize all of that. As you'll see, uh, this is very similar to AFNI proc PY example number nine, which is in the help file of that command. So look at that if, if you want a really good AFNI proc PY command to do that resting state analysis. But that all looks good. Once we have that, we're actually going to generate the script. And I'm not going to run it. Um, I assume that at this point you're pretty familiar with, with how to run that stuff from Uber PY. But we are going to take a quick look in there just to see what it gave us. Whoops. Sorry, my directory. It's all in this proc.test, and a lot of this pre-processing stuff is just what you've seen before, you know, tcat, 3dt, outcount, but I'm going to go to 3 dd convolve. Okay, at this point you can just run it, it's going to give you an ERRTS file, which you'll use for your resting set analyses, but just to give you a deeper understanding about what's going on, 3 dd convolve is called upon just like it normally is, but notice that it has this uh, x1d stop option. So essentially it's not going to run through this whole model, it's just going to set up the matrices and then feed that into this command on these next few lines here called 3D T project, which is very quick, it's very efficient, and it will give you what you want. Uh, the reason this is so much better, it has fewer steps for things to go wrong. Okay, so in the first in the first point, you're not even going to be running this you know entire model like we usually would. Uh, you know, I got the a C bucket option, then removing that with 3D synthesize and subtracting that from the last processing step or just looking at the ERRTS file, uh, you don't need to do any of that. You just have this X1D stop, which setting up the matrix is very easy, and then it's fed into 3D T project. And so this is probably a block of code that I'll post on my blog in case for whatever reason uh, you have those matrices and you just want to use 3D T project and not run through all the rest of this. Although on my machine, this entire process, pre-processing to 3D T project, it took just a few minutes. It's uh, very, very, very quick. Okay, so that's 3DT Project. Uh, I would use this. I would highly, highly recommend using this to replace the earlier types of simple connectivity methods that we used for specifically functional connectivity. So I hope that helps. Again, let me know if you have any questions and good luck. This will make things much quicker, much more fun, I hope. Uh, you'll be able to do analyses much quicker and be able to mess around with stuff a lot more. So that's all I have and I'll see you guys next time.